Is this the highest performing wing I've ever made? It is forged from carbon fiber using 3D printed molds after all. Technology, buzzwords, it's got to be the best, right? When it comes to wings, they need to be lightweight but very stiff to ensure they don't deflect while keeping the car firmly planted to the ground. They need to be strong to ensure they can withstand high vibration and acceleration but also really precise to ensure they get consistent aerodynamic performance. And they need to do all of this while maintaining a very good lift to drag ratio so they don't sap too much speed from the top end with a bunch of drag. I make a lot of custom wings for my RC cars, whether it's active aerodynamics or my ground effects car or something completely different. They're all custom designed wing profiles. And that's because most RC cars come out of the box with some really poor excuses for a wing. Most of the time it's just vacuum formed shapes or wedges or sometimes even just a flat plate at an angle. And that's gonna have a really low lift to drag ratio. In some cases, it's a weird aesthetic design that doesn't follow any aerodynamic principles at all really. And so by designing my own custom wings, I can make sure I get as much downforce as possible without all of that added drag of the poor designs that totally sap your top speed. Seriously, even the rear wings on an awesome car like an Arma Limitless is probably only going to have a lift to drag ratio of two to three and a flat plate is going to be more like one and a half, if not less. Whereas with this dual element design, we're gonna have a lift to drag ratio of over 15. That means I can get like five to seven times as much downforce for a given drag value. Or if I maintain lift the same, I get way less drag. But one of the biggest challenges is making wings cheap enough so that I can build several of them, but durable enough for when I inevitably crash. Enter this awesome video I saw by Easy Composites where they forge carbon fiber from 3D printed molds. And I went to order their awesome kit and then I was slapped in the face by insane shipping costs. Kit's a great value, shipping costs are crazy because hazardous materials. So today we're gonna adapt their process to a kit that I was able to find here in the States. And it's pretty generic by the way, so I'm sure you can find it in other countries. First thing first, the design is dual element and the smaller element is really thin, which is why it's so hard to make it stiff enough. The molds themselves are designed identically for the large and small element. They're just scaled to the size, obviously. And the mold portion needs to be recessed down in a cavity with tapered walls so that when you compress everything together, excess resin can actually run out through these channels. And when you print these molds, you wanna print on a really high resolution or do a ton of post-processing work because every single little layer line and defect will show up on every single part from here on out. And the cars these go on can usually go well over 100 miles an hour. So I want to reiterate that these aero surfaces need to be stiff and high quality. So after the molds are 3D printed and you've sanded all your layer lines smooth, you want to apply four to five coats of a release wax. This is the stuff I used and it worked great. <laughs> and, I, and to spice things up a little, I actually put real 24 karat gold flakes on the surface to see if it would actually show through on the finished part. And I start this process by coating each half of the mold with a layer of epoxy. And this is where I put my gold flakes into. Then it's time to start the slow process of loading the mold with the carbon fiber and the resin. And in this case, you really need to have it weighed out properly, especially for the carbon. I put 60% carbon by weight in this mold, which means resin is 40%, but the resin doesn't need to be exact because you will be compressing it and forcing the excess resin out. But if you were not to put enough carbon or too much carbon in, this would be really challenging to get right. And this is the kit I bought, by the way. It was quarter inch chopped carbon and it came with a small batch of resin. I think something like this could probably make me like 20 wings or so, which is a really great deal. Once all the carbon and resin was loaded, I cleaned up the mold halves, especially along the parting line, and then just mashed them together. I used a vise and some clamps to continuously apply more 
and more pressure. But this is important that you do not do this too fast or you might destroy your mold. And then it's off to a 24 hour cure. After it's all cured, you just separate the mold halves. And in my case, I had added some small ejection holes that were filled with clay so that I could kind of push the part out from the bottom side. It also helped me to kind of flex the mold to break it loose. Then you just trim everything up based on how much flashing you have, apply your final finishing touches, maybe some epoxy touch up and then some clear coat and you're ready to go. Then we slap some 3D printed end plates on it, which took way less time to make than the rest of this. And we are left with this. I think it looks great, but that doesn't mean anything if it doesn't run good. So let's go for it. The rough performance testing felt great, but the car is obviously not very aerodynamically balanced with only a rear wing and no front splitter. I crashed a few times and the wing suffered virtually zero damage, not even a scratch, which was really surprising to me. The elements did pop out on one crash, which was actually one of the failure modes I hoped to see because it means they didn't shatter so I could just pop them right back in the end plates and we're good to go. Long term, I think I'm gonna turn this car into a tiny Pikes Peak racer. That was fun and all, but not very scientific. So let's look at some real numbers to see if the forged carbon really is better than other processes. First, we're gonna run a deflection test on the small element. And we're starting with a resin wing that has carbon fiber rods embedded in it to increase the stiffness. And we see that on our fancy Lego test setup, we bottom out at 35 Newtons. But when we try the exact same test with our forged carbon fiber wing, we actually exceed the 50 Newton limit of our force tester. And we weren't even close to bottoming. And next, I'm gonna test the big element in a cantilevered configuration using just a 25 Newton push. And we'll compare with a similar carbon reinforced resin cast wing, a 3D printed PLA wing, and obviously our forged carbon fiber. And it was eye opening just how little the forged carbon fiber wing deflected coming in at just under half an inch. The carbon fiber reinforced resin casting came in at about 1.8 inches and the 3D printed wing was almost double that at a little over three and a half inches. And this huge stiffness differential is what allows me to mount the wings just on the ends without any center support. And this in turn makes them more aerodynamically efficient, which seriously does translate to more downforce and less drag, AKA more grip and more speed. But what about weight, right? Here we see the opposite where the 3D printed wing is the lightest because it wasn't quite 100% infill and the forged carbon wing is the heaviest. But there were some minor dimensional differences between all of them and they were all still very light. So regardless, I'm super happy with the results. Now for the big question, was it worth it? They are far and wide the stiffest wing I've ever produced, which gives me mounting options I won't have with any other process. And on the far end, 3D printed wings are actually so flexible and so fragile that you're really limited in how you can use them and they're almost always gonna break when you crash. And so while I have used 3D printed wings in the past, it's something that you'd never really try and sell. But there are some drawbacks. The process is very labor intensive and very slow and you get carbon fiber splinters everywhere through the cleanup and finishing. If I were trying to produce these at quantity, I could probably produce about five an hour if I had five molds, but then you need a 24 hour cure. But when it comes to the carbon reinforced resin casting, it only takes about 15 minutes to cure and I could probably make 20 an hour and then reuse those molds right afterwards. And those wings can probably be made good enough for most designs, but they don't look as cool as forged carbon and they will never be as stiff. So it's really a function of how much do you need that stiffness? Now, as far as making custom wings with any process, it's always worth the time in my book. And that's because the fake wings that you usually see, they're not just poor in terms of lift to drag ratio. That drag doesn't just sap top speed. It also diminishes the handling characteristics of the vehicle. And that also makes it harder to balance the car. 
which is a topic I actually hope to cover a lot more as I add more aero to this car, but let me know what you think, if it's something you're interested in, or if it's yeah, a little bit too much work. Now I want to talk about a few quick tips if you're trying to make these molds. One thing I did that saved me a lot of time is I only printed the insert of the mold for the wing section at a really high quality so that I could save time on the overall print process because the majority of the mold doesn't need to be the finest resolution. And with it being an insert, sanding was made way easier to really smooth out those layer lines. I also really recommend watching the Easy Composites video because it goes into so much detail about all the tiny little things that matter. I didn't want to just recover all his stuff. I wanted to show how I use different materials to accomplish forged carbon fiber in this application. Also wear your protective equipment. This stuff can give you splinters, it can be harsh. Always go by the manufacturer's guidance. I also want to point out that my analysis was done with 2D simulations, which kind of overstate the lift to drag ratio a little bit because these wings are really low aspect ratio, but in general it should all scale in the same direction so you're going to still see those huge differentials where real wings massively outperform some of these flat plates and vacuum formed fake wings. That's all I have. Thanks for watching and I hope to be back soon with another project.